Well, let's see what, see what I say, nine. Well, as we all know, season three of Picard is slowly coming along. It's two months away. And we've had, of course, Robert Meyer Burnett saying he's already seen the whole season and it is a return to form for Star Trek. It actually is Star Trek somehow. They've managed to um, acknowledge the second, first and second seasons of Picard while still making it Star Trek. And I was fairly optimistic, but I, I'm feeling a bit less at the moment. Um, for example, TrekMovie.com has an article about how Picard's talking about the tensions between um, Beverly Crusher and Riker, and Star Trek, you don't have tensions between the crew. You don't have tensions between people because we're evolved. We, we, we're not... It's, it's just... Uh, this, everything is like a step backwards with with the new Trek shows, and it's like the it's like apparently Beverly Crush is going to be behaving immorally, and Picard's going to challenge her about that. Is what seems to be what's happening, that she's been put in some sort of situation where she's done things she wouldn't normally have done, and just again it's it's questioning and um, um, dismantling basically the ideals and. Um, the, the well the ideals of Star Trek that 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 you put your morals first that you don't do things that are wrong you don't do what's easy you do what's right um, and we have all these people just doing what works for them and justifying it um, and acting like you know people today whereas in the 24th 25th century um, 23rd 24th 25th century people are spo we're supposed humanity is supposed to be evolved and we're better than that we know better and we don't just act like we do today. And there's just this idea of we need to make these characters real, we need them to act like today. And it's like, no, this is supposed to be Shakespeare, this is supposed to be a period piece, this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be action heroes, this is supposed to be people who are better than us, people to aspire to, not people to relate to fully. I mean, you have to believe they're human beings and believe they're real, but you need to want to be like them, not feel like they're just like you. And um, the thing of Riker, it's the same thing, it's like, him and Picard are arguing because he doesn't agree with something Picard says and because he's not the captain anymore he gets to question him and I don't really want to see four or five episodes of Picard and um, Riker and um, Beverly fighting and arguing like just they're on like some sort of reality TV show today where all people do is find drama and find arguments out of trivial things that you should know better than to, you know, to, to pursue basically. So it's a bit of a worry. Um, I feel like people are sounding like they're out of character. Um, they talk about the tensions and so forth, and um, that alone would be enough to make the relationships interesting. You don't need to have this forced conflict between the characters when Gene created these characters with no conflict, and Star Trek had no conflict between the characters. And yes, people say, how can you write drama like that? Well, you have to think about it. It's hard, it's not easy. And if you're not up to that, go work on some reality show where you can script a bunch of silly people arguing about the most ridiculous things because that apparently is relatable human drama. Um, Star Trek's better than that, or was. So yeah, I'm not feeling very encouraged by the last few articles I've seen from trekmovie.com and some of the interviews from Star Trek actors and that about the next couple of seasons. Um, because Robert Meyer Burnett, for example, his favourite Star Trek is Deep Space Nine, which is the least Star Trek of all the Star Treks. So the fact that he thinks this season three is a return to form when he's ideal of Star Trek, but then he's also his favourite film is Star Trek The Motion Picture, which is the complete opposite of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. So I just don't know what to make of him or it. But um, maybe they're just talking up these conflicts, maybe they're just little moments and they're not, you know, the characters arc or motivation for the whole series or season or part of the story or part of, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I'm just, I, I hate that I care enough to speculate and try and work this out because season one and two of Picard I didn't care at all what happened. I actually care what happens this next season. So I'm investing some time and energy and, and care into it and it's frustrating. I just sort of want to be at the last episode and just I know whether or not it's worth it or not. And if it's worth it, I'll watch it again and I'll enjoy it. If it's not, then I never have to deal with it again. Like, I can't ever see myself watching Discovery Season 2, 3, or 1, 2, or 3 again. Maybe Season 4, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so, I don't know. 
I can't believe I'm already at five minutes. Um, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I know a lot of writers say it's totally unrealistic to have no conflict between the main characters of a show and for the conflict to all be external. Um, I, I don't think that. I, I think they did that for the first couple of years and that was, that was what Star Trek was. And um, it is possible. You can have little things, of course, just little day-to-day -day things, but no big issues because... You know, we don't have issues. These, these, these people don't have issues in the future. They're, they're not messed up like us. <laughs> they're healthy, you know, healthy people, um, healthy evolved people from...